Jack Riggs and today we're going to show you how to can meat. I've been doing this most of my life uh, from my grandmother canning fish to my mother canning hamburger and we've never been sick so it's been a tried and true recipe and and today I have just a little less than 20 pounds of ground beef right now so we're going to cook that down and get most of any kind of grease that comes out. This is fairly lean meat and so we shouldn't get too much of that but you don't want a lot of grease in your your hamburger. That's not good for long-term storage. So anyway, we'll cook this down. When we get done, we'll come back and show you how it's going to look and we'll move to the next step. Alright, so we jump ahead here. We boiled our close to 20 pounds of hamburger. We chopped up uh, half a dozen onions we put in it. And at the current, we have our, our pressure cooker over here ready to go. We've got our lids boiling. We've got our glass jars in the oven set at 200 to sterilize those, but you can also use your dishwasher to sanitize those if you prefer. It's just a way that I've done it in the past and no reason to change. And so we'll go over here and take a look. So you can see we've got this heating up. It's starting to boil a little bit. We have our lids boiling because you want those lids sanitized as well. Plus it softens the rubber gasket. And I have the, the jars in here. We're going to start getting those out. And we'll put them in over here and start to load them up. And we're also going to add a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. And that's optional. But we just kind of like to do that because it takes care of the flavor a little more since salt is a flavor enhancer. I believe my... Uh, cooker does nine, so two, four, six, eight, maybe one more. All right, we're ready to load the jar, so I'm going to remove the water from these lids and just pour that off so I don't burn myself. I'll just set these over here. The lids are kind of hard to pick up, but I have magnet that I use to do that. So that's the plan. Next we're going to put one of these. You can get one of these at the dollar store. It's just a wide mouth funnel and a scoop to put them in. Now we're going to load the hamburger in just below the neck. Let's see how that looks. Use my glove hand. Maybe a little bit more. And next, you can just use water if you want, but we like to use bouillon or beef broth to add to these, so we'll just bring that in there. Just at the bottom of the, of the thread, that's plenty full. Let's do one more just so you understand what we're doing here. It smells good already. I'm still a little crying from the onions that we had. It's all right to push it down a little if you need to. And we'll fill this up. Oop, plenty. And so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to put the lids on. Oh, excuse me. I jumped the gun. You want to wipe the rim off. Some people use vinegar to do that because they'll like there's a little grease that can cause it not to seal, but I've never had a problem just wiping them off with a dry towel. Just want to make sure that they're clean so that something isn't being held up there. And so put this lid on. Put this lid on. I think you have two of them on that last one. Did I have two on there? No, they still no, just one on. Okay. And where's my rings? I don't have my rings up here. Anyway, we'll pause at this point since I don't have my rings here. We grabbed a few rings just to keep the process rolling here. And the rings, you just want to screw them down. Just throw the kind of hand tight because oxygen has to bubble out of there in the pressure cooker. And so we're just screwing this down. It's a little bit of an art. You just don't want to over tighten it. But that feels really good. Let's do one more. Trying to make this video as short as I can, yet have all the information. So, 
We're not going to fill them all and have you wait it out to see what's next. A little mess here. And get my... Oh, there is two on this one. Let me get them apart. We'll use this one for now. Okay, so next what we're going to do with these is we've got the water preheating over here, so we're going to put these jars in. Now a little tip that you might want to buy is you might want to get one of these. This will grab your jars to take them out of your, your pressure cooker when you're done, or you can use them to put them in that way if you like also. How much water do you have in the pressure cooker? The, the water, I minimum of two inches in there. You don't want them to overrun the lids, but you don't need a lot of water. It's basically to get this up to pressure. By getting the pressure up, then you'll get the temperature to be increased, and that's why we bottle it in a pressure cooker, is to increase the temperature. So we'll see you in a few when we take this back off. All right, so back again, I, I neglected to put salt in the first ones that I did, but it's no big deal. That's an optional thing to do, just to add increased flavor and have it already salted. But right now I want and hold to explain, on, how much salt? A uh, fourth a teaspoon to a pint jar. But right now I want to explain that, I don't know if you can see that uh, steam blowing off there. This has been on for several minutes. Oh, oh it's definitely <laughs> hot. It's been on for several minutes now and the steam is blowing out pretty steady. At this point I'm going to put this weight on. Now any weights, they have 5, 10, and 15. These have ones that you can take off should you want to. But for most of us here in America that's above a thousand feet, we want the 15 pound weight at any elevation above a thousand feet. And so that's what we have today. And so I'm going to put that on there. You can hear the sound of the steam. So we purged the air out of here as much as we could. And we're going to just let that build up. Now, once I think, once this top starts popping off a little bit, I'm going to set my timer to 90 minutes. I could actually do 85. I even have it written down on my my canner just so I don't ever screw that up. If I was doing quartz, it would be 90 minutes. Today, we do 85. Usually, I just leave it at 90 minutes for either one. An extra five minutes isn't going to change as far as hurt any product or anything like that. And I have my, my lids going here because I do have a second pressure cooker that we're going to put on. And so I'll get back to you. Oops, sorry guys. Okay, sorry, my fault. Okay, oh. Woo, really screwed that up, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, I'll get back to you when this is done because there's something that needs to be told when this is done. Is you don't want to open the lid, you don't want to take this off. Whatever you do, don't take this off when it reaches its 85 or 90 minutes. It needs to cool down by itself, so well, when we come back, we'll have it ready to cool down and we'll show you how they come out. What happens if you take that off before it cools down? What will happen is your bottles inside will rupture and they'll bust open because the pressure will be too great inside the bottle to the outside or the inside of the, the cooker here and they'll explode inside of your bottler here and you definitely don't need that after all the hard work and the money you put into it. So make that a key note. Boil your lids, sanitize your bottles, wipe off your lids, salt is optional. I hope I've covered everything basic here. This applies to chicken or deer meat or any other type of meat product that you want to put in this pressure cooker. It all falls under the same recipe of instructions. So thanks for watching. We'll get back when we open it up. All right, so I've got this running. I moved it over to this heater because this one seems to need a little more heat to pop off. We're waiting for this one to start steaming before we put another weight on it. This has a different weight. So it has the 5, 10, 15. And so we're going to use the 15 on it because we're above 1,000 feet. I've got my heat turned clear down to 2 on my burner, as you can see. And yes, this is still popping off pretty aggressively. Uh, you don't want to overheat your product. You run the risk of rupturing your bottles or even boiling your pot dry. And so 
Just get that down, this particular one. It looks good just the way it's looking right now. Just a nice even rock as it lets that off. And I've got my burner set on too. This one's probably going to take a little more heat to pop this off, but it won't. It'll just jump up and down a little bit. But in the very minimum, maybe two, three times a minute, you should, you should be able to see this thing let a little pressure off each time. It may rotate, it may not, but at least two or three times a minute, you can see that letting a little pressure off. That tells you that you've got the right temperature in here and the right pressure in combination. I don't have gauges on either one of mine because these are older pressure cookers, but if you're out looking to buy one now, I'd probably get a gauge, but I'm not too relied on a gauge. I've worked for companies that calibrated those sort of things, and I often wonder how accurate the gauges are on these pressure cookers. So we'll see you shortly. When these hold on, hold on. Explain, explain um, the gauges or the temperature thing again, and, and the well, when you increase the pressure in your in your pot, that also increases the temperature. That's why you're right. But for where we live. For where we live, anything over a thousand feet needs to be a 15 pound pressure weight on the top here. And so I have different rings that I can take off of this and make it a 5 or a 10 or a 15. I've got them all on there. This one has different port holes that have been cut differently. And so I'm going to put the 15 on this one as soon as the steam starts flowing out of here again. And so I'll talk to you in a minute when we actually take these off and by no instance take do not take this off after you've cooked your 90 minutes or your 85 minutes whichever you chose to do don't take this off these things have to cool down naturally if you do they will break okay, we're at the final point here i've cooked this for 90 minutes which was five minutes more than recommended but i just going to go with that anyway and the pressure is cooled down, so when I lift this off, there's no steam coming out of it. And we're going to pop it open. Also remember, you don't want to take that off for your CX miniature explosions going on in your pressure cooker. This is a handy little tool to have. I recommend you get one of these. There's my hamburger. Nice. Beautiful looking. This is my last batch that I'm done. This hamburger can be used for anything, for making sloppy joes to nachos or different kind of casseroles. Or just make a sandwich with it. Mix it up with a little mayo and onion and there you go. Alright, I don't hope I covered everything from start to finish, but there you go, we've got all this for our food storage. We're kind of, uh, I would say maybe a little bit on the prepper side, but we'll use these throughout the season, when, especially when we don't need to uh, make anything else. We can just pop one of these out and mix it up with a little salad dressing, make a sandwich, or throw some sauce in there and have a sloppy joe, or like I say, add nachos to it. I hope you enjoyed my video, and so I'd appreciate it if you'd like it and subscribe to it if you'd like it. And hopefully I'll come out with some more videos on home food storage. It seems to be one of our big things that my wife and I do. And until we see you again, this is Jack Riggs saying goodbye.